so you asked about deficiencies and what are some of the common ones. Well, omega-3, okay, so about 80% of the world's population and 90% of the U.S. population yeah. does not meet the requirements for omega-3 fatty acids. Yeah. That's a lot. Which is basically what your body's made of, you know, the cell membranes, your brain, you know, and nervous tissue. It's, it runs regulatory inflammation. I mean, it's, it's, it's critical to everything. Exactly. Um, and there's been a lot of work by um, Dr. Bill Harris. So I'm, I'm um, an associate professor at the Fatty Acid Research Institute with no. Bill Harris. And so I'm involved in a lot of research on omega-3. Mm. And um, he's published just an array of studies that are quite convincing. So looking at the omega-3 index, so this is the omega-3 levels in red blood cells, mm. which is sort of like a long-term marker for omega-3 yeah. because they take about what- so What does the index weeks. actually measure? It, me it measures the EPA and DHA levels along with a bunch of other fatty acids if, if you're interested in that. But it's really the EPA and DHA level in the red blood cell membrane. Which it gives is, you the index and you want a certain number. Exactly. Right. So he's published studies using like the Framingham cohort. So these are large um, cohort studies uh, with a lot of people. And he's looked at the omega-3 index and correlated with all-cause mortality, so dying from a, a variety of different um, causes. And what he's found is that people that have what is defined as a high omega-3 index, so this would be 8% or more. Okay have a five-year increased life expectancy compared to people that have a 4% omega-3 mm. index, which mm. is low. Mm. And actually, the average omega-3 index of the U.S. population is about 5%, pretty close to that 4%. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's why I actually measure that in the Function Health Labs. Yeah. So it's great to see so, when we see that. Five-year increased life expectancy. If you think about Japan, Japan, who eat, they eat a lot of seafood in Japan. Yeah. Their omega-3 index on average is like 10%. So yeah. they're above yeah. the high, the yeah. 8%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but their mercury levels are probably also very high. <laughs> what's funny, it's funny that you say that, Mark. Um, there's been studies like in pregnant women. Yeah. You probably remember this, that decades ago, women were advised to stop eating fish because of the high merc mercury. And um, that actually had a detrimental sort of effect because omega-3 fatty acids, as you mentioned, they're so important for the brain, very important for um, neurodevelopment. And there have now been a whole host of studies that have come out showing that omega-3 fatty acids actually protect from any potential mercury toxicity in the developing fetus. And in fact, um, there's been studies looking at children that were born to mothers that had a high level of omega-3 and high mercury. Those children had scored higher on intelligence tests, so IQ scores. Even like even if so, so high mercury was actually biomarking intelligence. It wasn't actually the mercury, it was high wow, omega-3. That's crazy. But yes, yeah, you get yeah. you get the point. Although other than in, in uh, Japan, they eat a lot of seaweed, which uh, and seaweed is a chelator for heavy metals. <laughs> oh, is it? So is green tea, by the way. I think garlic, yeah, garlic, garlic, the beta yeah. beta merca um, yeah. mercaptans and garlic as well. Um, but back to the omega three and this study I was talking about from Bill Harris is so interesting because he also this is a huge cohort of people. The Framingham, there's people that have all sorts of lifestyles, including smoking, and so he did a sub analysis looking at smokers and non-smokers and their omega-3 index. And what Bill and his associates and colleagues found was that smokers with a high level of omega-3, so they had a high omega-3 index of 8%, they had the same mortality as non-smokers with a low omega-3 index. Okay, everybody, this does not mean you can smoke and take your own fish oil pills. So don't, or, don't get any ideas. Or <laughs> if you're not getting enough omega-3, it's like smoking, right? I mean, if you look... That's another way to look at, right? If you look at the graph of this, I mean, it's incredible. The overlay yeah. is perfect. Yeah, perfect. fascinating. So having a low omega-3 index had the same mortality risk as smoking. Okay, so we're talking about 90% of the American population is in that category. Yes, yes. And, you know, there's also been a whole host of randomized controlled trials looking at omega-3s being protect cardioprotective, right? So they're they're very important for cardiovascular health, um, triglycerides. Yeah, there's actually prescription omega-3s, which you can pay much, much more than you would <laughs> go get a basic omega-3 for lowering triglycerides as a therapy. So. Right, yeah. And it, you mentioned inflammation, you know, so this is another thing they do. They play a major role in lowering inflammation and so that's um, a driver of aging in, in many ways, of brain aging, um, you know, cardiovascular aging. So omega-3s are, I would say, one of the most profound lifestyle factors that can uh, play a role in, um, in negating inflammation aside from exercise. 